This is a problem that Catherine Kosak uh, proposed in one of her videos. It's looking at a certain kind of hummingbird, and the question is, we want to know something about, uh, we want to study the incubation time for eggs for those hummingbirds. So this looks very much like a written assignment. The idea is to, to provide the original problem and then provide the answers. So the first question that's being asked is to state the random variable. The random variable is what we're measuring. We're measuring the incubation time for individual eggs. We'll call that random variable x, and it's the number of days. It's the number of days uh, to incubate an egg. So the next question is, what can we say about the sample distribution of sample means? Let's look at a picture just real quickly. Our random variable is x, the number of days it takes to incubate an egg. Now it doesn't say anything about how normal that is, but usually these kinds of things are somewhat normally distributed. The mean is 16, if I remember right from looking at the problem. Uh, yep, it's got a mean of 16. And we're going to assume that the standard deviation is 2. So that's the distribution of the x's. And we're looking at a sample of size 30. And we want to look at the distribution of the sample means. So for every possible sample of size 30, we're thinking of what the mean of each of those samples is and what this distribution will look like. Because this sample is 30 or larger, the central limit theorem tells us that this distribution is going to be normally distributed. Furthermore, the mean of the sample means will be the same as the mean of this original population, so it's going to be equal to 16. And the standard deviation of the sample, the distribution of the sample means will be the standard deviation of the original population divided by the square root of the sample size. Now this information is coming from the central limit theorem. So of course this is just going to be equal to a 2 divided by the square root of 30. This standard deviation is sometimes called a standard error. That's going to be convenient for us to call that SE. It's the standard deviation of the distribution of the sample means. So those are the things that we can say about this distribution of sample means. We can tell what its mean is. It's related to the mean over here. And what its standard deviation is, it's going to be this standard deviation divided by the square root of 30. So that answered both questions in part, in part B. And, both, and those answers are essentially because of the standard uh, be, because of the central limit theorem. So our third question is, what is the probability that a sample mean is between 16 and 17 days? So we're interested in looking at this distribution and finding the probability that the mean of a sample is going to be between 16 and 17 days. So we're looking for this red area. The p-norm the p will help us find those. This blue area could be found with a p-norm. We'll write a script for that in just a minute. And this orange area could also be found with the p-norm. Actually, because that orange area goes from the mean all the way to the left, that orange area is going to be one half, but we could use a p-norm to find it. So the blue area minus the orange area would be the probability of that red area that we're looking for. Let's write a script that does that. Now because I'm going to need to use this mean a number of times, I'm going to say that mu is, it will be assigned the value of 16. I'm going to need to use this standard deviation maybe more than once, so I'll call that sig for sigma, is going to be assigned the value of 2. n is our sample size, so I'm going to define that. So those are the given values in this particular problem. 
Now let's do some calculations. This standard error or the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means is going to be calculated as this standard uh, deviation divided by the square root of n. So sig divided by the square root of n is going to be this 2 divided by the square root of 30. Now I need to find this blue area which is just a p norm of 17 in a distribution that has a mean of mu that's the 16 and a standard deviation that we calculated as that standard error minus the orange area which will be p norm of 16 in a distribution that has a mean of mu and a standard deviation of that standard error that we calculated. Okay, so that's going to be about 49%. Uh, that, that means that this 17 probably should have been a little further over here because that's nearly half of this, uh, it, it's nearly all of this right half because it's up to close to 50%. So my handwritten drawing is just out of, out of whack. This calculation could have also been done by using a standard normal distribution by simply transforming these values to their z-scores. The z-score tells how far in standard deviations, how many standard deviations a, a particular value is away from the mean. So of course the mean itself will have a z-score of zero. The standard normal distribution is a normal distribution, and so we'd need to find this z-score of 17. The z-score for 17 is how far 17, how many standard deviations 17 is away from the mean. And uh, so the standard deviations are these SEs that we calculated here. And so z of 17 is going to be 17 minus the mu divided by this standard error, the, the standard deviation of this distribution. So divided by the standard error. Let's put some of this into the script. So the Z for score for 17 is going to be 17 minus the mu, how far 17 is away from the mean, divided by the standard deviation for this distribution that we're looking at. Z16 will be 16 minus mu. Of course, mu is 16, so that amount is going to be 0. And so 0 divided by something is still going to be 0. So Z16, of course, is going to be 0. And so then we just need to find the P norm of Z17 the p-norm of z17 will be this blue area, which will be the same as the blue area that we had up here, minus p-norm of z16. And the p-norm of z16 will be this orange area, which is going to be one-half, because it's everything to the left of the mean. But uh, it'll be that orange area, which is the same as the orange area that we had up here. And so that blue area minus the orange area will equal that area in between here, which is this red area, which will be exactly the same area as that uh, up there. And you'll notice that uh, we get the same results. Uh, the area between 16 and 17 is 49%, uh, about almost 50%, 49.69%. Okay, that's the idea. Good luck. I hope that's helpful.